few weeks ago, I got the opportunity to go to Smash Ultimate Summit 4. In case you've never seen one, summits are these really cool events where the best gamers in the world are summoned to sunny Southern California to compete over a long week of hard competition and easy living. Not only is there a crazy tournament bracket featuring only the best players on the planet, but there's lots of side stuff too, like bop it, boot fights, flight sims, lie detectors, talent shows, mini golf, squid game, ping pong, and lots and lots of mafia. Very bad mafia. I am the best player. <laughs> but in all my time watching and attending summits, I've realized something. These competitions, as varied as they may be, they only really test one skill each. To have 16 of the most elite gamers on the planet in the same room and not have them pushed to their absolute limits, that's a monumental waste. They should absolutely do more. They gotta go further beyond. These gamers are lazy. And so I realized what I had to do. I huddled with my Twitch chat and formulated a plan. I arrived at Smash Ultimate Summit with a check bag full of games and a dream. I would find the ultimate gamer. Once I got to Summit, I grabbed eight of the best players in the building and got to work making a single elimination bracket. Some of these dork lords wanted to focus on the tournament and play their best in bracket. <laughs> Look how that turned out. Anyway, once I had eight suckers roped in, I was ready to start. I told them absolutely nothing about the games that they would be playing, only what the stakes were. The title of Ultimate Gamer and 100 US dollars. The first game on display, Don't Break the Ice, a game of critical decision making and surgical precision. The aim of the game is to take turns breaking off pieces of ice without knocking over intrepid aptenodite Peter Penguin. If he falls into the ice, you lose. Round one is Mars versus Goblin. Mars is something of a maverick, extremely talented, but frequently reckless. He kind of plays how he wants all the time, and sometimes he pays for it. Goblin, on the other hand, is a devoted, full-send anarchist. This dude opts for chaos whenever possible, and I expect his playstyle in this game is going to be no different, which may hurt him. So the way that you play the game is you have to knock out each piece of ice and whoever knocks over the penguin is eliminated, okay? And we're gonna do best two out of three. Who's younger? I'm younger. The rules do say whoever's younger goes first. Goblin, take the honors. The game begins with both competitors trying to knock out a single line of ice until Mars decides to go for a different route. Goblin strikes back by eliminating the entire line from Mars' side. Now there's only a few more pieces on the outside. We gotta be very delicate in how we handle this. On Mars' turn again, he makes a huge error by pushing down a large chunk of ice at once. Goblin responds back with a miracle play that leaves Peter standing. You better stay. Slip. <laughs> Mars pleads with the penguin, please stay. And he does, as Mars knocks off another piece of the ice in the corner. However, Goblin hits the final piece, and now Mars is left with a seemingly impossible scenario. Is this checkmate? Oh, no. Is this checkmate? I, got, I wasn't even outplayed. <laughs> I hit, it's because he's younger. Peter is now dangling by a thread on Mars's move. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you guys have a better idea? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to break the ice, Mars. Yeah. I think I'm pretty that's sure I'm going to break your phone. <laughs> oh, no! Mars. Game one goes to Goblin. It's game two now, and both competitors are staying on their respective sides. Eventually, they begin striking in the middle of the ice, first on their own sides, and then on the opponents. Mars plays with fire in the corner, but Goblin has a lot more real estate to work with as he conservatively bumps off piece after piece, not making huge waves. I'm scared! Whoa. Mars tries to make a play, but thinks better of it, opting for the other side instead. Goblin makes a crucial error by knocking the south side and then going up to the North Pole, causing Peter to hopelessly plummet into the water. Or does he? No way! His sprint's broken! The ice is not, is the ice broken? The ice broken! The penguin hasn't Wait, fallen. the penguin did fall. His head just hit the side. He's got a concussion! I couldn't find out anything in the rule book about this, so I kind of had to make a judgment call. As Peter is not on the ice anymore and is being held up by the structure of the game, I did have to award this game to Mars, which elicits an eye roll from Goblin and sends us into our third and final game. Mars immediately adopts a new strategy by knocking in a ton of pieces without actually knocking them through. He's actually just mashing on all of them and not breaking any. That can't be legal. I just have to not break it. I did tell him that was legal, so, you know, that's my bad. It was funny. Goblin carefully plans his next move by hovering his hammer over the ice on each spot. Our two warriors continue to go back and forth until disaster strikes on Mars' turn. <gasps> uh, what? Yeah. No, he hasn't fallen! He hasn't fallen! He hasn't fallen! He said his head hasn't touched anything! Look, his head is up! You see, viewer, Peter was previously being held up by the structure of the game. But what if he was being held up by the ice itself? 
you see technically only one side, one flipper was holding onto the ice, while the other was not. But it was clear that he was only being held in because of the structure of the game itself. Not knowing the rules in such a circumstance, I called the highest authority I knew. This is CAC, head TO of Summit and Ultimate. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Ultimate and Summit. Before you make your decision, what's your PayPal? Uh, <laughs> okay, what's up? What's up? The goal of the game okay. is to have the penguin not fall in the ice. The penguin is technically being held up, but he's not touching the ice. Who wins here? On my professional TO opinion, he is not on the ice right now. He's not on the ice, which means it's over. Ice. You're trolling! Oh, his foot is below the legal ice level. There is no legal yes, ice level! Flat. That's professional flat right opinion. Here, right? The ice this has block, been broken. This. Goblin moves on to round two, and Mars is out of the tournament. Mars flies into an inconsolable rage, incensed by the prospect of losing $100. His, his name? Is below Peter. The ice. Peter Penguin. You're fucking awful. No! <laughs> Peter! He grabs Peter Penguin for the- Oh, shit! No! <laughs> oh, 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 shit! Shit. Mars had thrown the penguin with enough force to break a $5,000 TV. Just kidding, it's a TCL. It was like $1,000, but still shocking all the same. Everyone at the venue is stunned. Most of all me, because I think I'm going to jail. I check in with several witnesses all over the venue. Yo, is that on camera? Please tell me that's on camera. Mars threw Peter Penguin. Well, we know where this ad revenue is going. Mars storms out of the venue, ripping the door off its hinge on his way out. We alert the local authorities and continue on with the tournament. It's what Peter would have wanted. Round two is Aaron versus Luis. Aaron is a longtime vet of Super Smash Bros, somebody who's enjoyed success across a multitude of different games, but I'm gonna take a guess that he's never directly interacted with a penguin in his life. Luis, or Louis Money, is a young up-and-comer who shows a lot of promise. This kid's got a lot of mistakes to make, but his edgy, youthful perspective may come in handy. Luis is up first, and he's so gentle, he can't even break this ice if he tried. Look at this. What is he doing? What a baby. Peter falls immediately, and Aaron calls for a ref, but since he is still on the ice, he remains in play. Both players maneuver around the downed penguin in the best way that they can, until they come to an impasse. That counts. That counts. That counts. He knocked one down. <gasps> the penguin head. The Don't penguin's the still here? Luis makes a daring play on his side of the board, keeping Peter on the ice and touching the structure while not falling into the water below. No, Aaron, look oh, no. oh no, the penguin's falling. Peter! Aaron attempts his last and most daring play. He switched hands! Peter, no! What does switching hands do for you here? I'm ambidextrous, shut the fuck up. But alas, it is not enough. We're now in game two and Aaron immediately channels his jutsu, I think. Luis goes on the offensive by hitting Aaron's side and leaving his totally fresh. The players once again start dinking both sides until there's just a pillar in the middle. Dude. Oh no. I got the magic touch. How'd you hit that one? Because it was loose. Aaron, it's not as hard as you think. There we go. Easy. Okay. Keep it moist. Keep it moist. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh no. Luis employs a feather touch to try to keep Peter on the ice, but it's all for naught as he careens into the water below, sending us into a game three. The third and final game begins mostly the same, with both competitors knocking off pieces from each other's sides. Both players knocking in ice back and forth until there is just one pillar remaining on Luis's turn. I'm not scared. Fuck, I'm scared. Luis surveys the situation and using his very gentle, delicate touch, somehow finds a way to keep Peter on the ice. Aaron is beside himself. He laments his situation. Oh no. If I lose this, Charlie drops me. <laughs> Come on. Come on. For Charlie. But after a moment, he breathes deeply, composes himself, and makes one of the finest plays in Don't Break the Ice history. Right there. Yes! Oh, oh my god! Oh my come god! On. Clutch, come on! Clutch, come on! Come on! It's unfucking winnable! Let's go! Luis looks especially forlorn by what has transpired. He's already pulled out one miracle, but does he have another? Sadly, the frozen gods were not with him that day, as Aaron takes the crown and advances into round two. It's round three now, and I'm bored. Bring out the new game, please! We're on the other side of the bracket now, and it's time for something new. It's time for Greedy Granny. Greedy Granny is a game of strategy and cunning. The goal is to steal one of each of Granny's treats without waking her up. Players take turns spinning a wheel and either take a treat from Granny's bowl or put one back. 
They then have to hit the button next to Granny as many times as it says on the spinner. If she wakes up, you put all your treats back. Tough luck. First match of Greedy Granny is a high-octane dogfight between Fatality and Light. Fatality here may have never played Greedy Granny, but he's actually the best Captain Falcon player in the world, and he's known for slamming the gas at all times. His playstyle is like a loose cannon, so he's gonna have to keep his attitude in check to keep Granny down. Otherwise, he might wake her. Not to be outdone, Light is the best Fox player in the world, and he actually ended up getting second in the little dingy side tournament they did for Smash Ultimate here, so he's definitely playing to win, or at least get second which, in a one-on-one -on -one game, is losing. Light, being the younger player, gets the opportunity to go first. Lucky him. The two go back and forth, taking sweets from Granny and also not understanding the rules. I can't really blame them for that. You gotta put- you can't have one of each. Oh, what, what do you mean then? No, you take- you need one of each to win the game. You only take one at a time. Eventually, Light awakes Granny. In a moment, I'm glad I didn't get on camera for fear of being demonetized. He'll have to put all of his hard-earned treats back into the bowl. Say goodnight. She's not really sleeping good night. yet. Good, uh... good night, Granny. After several rounds of play, Fatality is on a great run and only has to hit the button one time. One? But if he clicks it and she wakes yeah, up, she right? wakes up, it's over. Oh, no, <laughs> Granny! Yes! <laughs> Disaster strikes for Fatality. All of his treats will go back. You know, as I was filming this, I realized that this game isn't terribly interesting to spectate or commentate, so here's basically how the game went. That's you're, you're a one. That's green, that's, that's green. A one. That's yeah, a you're green. in there. That's you're a in green. There. God. Oh! Ah! <laughs> say goodnight, Granny. You have to say it. Good night. Just kind of rambled on about that. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> you never raised me properly. Eventually, Fatality is the victor, and Light makes excuses for his poor play. I never even got two for like more than a turn. No. no. You kept waking up Granny, bro. That's your problem. I don't like her. That's the end of Greedy Granny round one. Now everyone go below the video and comment goodnight Granny for seven years of good luck. Next up, we've got DeBuzz versus Meister. DeBuzz is one of the most cerebral players in the game, known for his immense knowledge and legendary patience. This guy didn't invent camping, but he definitely made it sexy. Just check out all these pastas. Good lord, that's a lot of pastas. His opponent is Meister, and he's important because it's his birthday! He turned 22 at this event. Got a cake and everything. Oh, and he's also the best Mr. Game & Watch player in the world from Mexico. Still a free agent as of this video, so if your dad owns an esports org, hit him up. Or hit me up, but I'm taking a 10% fee. This doesn't zap me, does it? It doesn't zap you, I promise. It does not zap you. Oh, I can get from I swear to God, you will not get zapped, I promise. Okay. I'm gonna keep it $100 with you, viewer. This is not a great game to watch, but I did get the buzz to say goodnight, Granny, a whole bunch. So here's some clips from the match. <laughs> you woke up, Granny! Oh, I hate you, Granny! She's so creepy. You gotta put her back in. Lady. All right, now lean her back, put her back to bed, and say goodnight, oh, Granny. Goodnight, Granny. Okay. This is a very close game. <gasps> oh, granny! No way! Let's Dr go, Granny. Give me this, no, give me this. It's one landing more. on this. One more. Oh, there's no way, dude. <laughs> Oh, come Does on! Take one. You Does take that one. Count? Take one of his two. Come on! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, you drop one and you hit it once, and now you put them all back. You I'm woke back. up, Granny. You, this game's long. That's not a two. one. Two, but you do get one. Uh oh. Oh my oh, god. No! <laughs> put the treats back, bro. Somebody must have given Granny a Red Bull or something because she just wakes up again, and again, and again. These two are locked in a seemingly eternal stalemate, not with each other but with Granny herself. After about 10 minutes, I'm bored again. I have to call an audible and switch to the next game early. I didn't want to have to do it, but it's time to do 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 That's right, it's exactly what you think. Mind Flex Duel. Through the power of six AAA batteries and three C batteries, this game actually reads your brain waves to telekinetically push a ball across the table. Check it out. Oh my god, that's cool. It also cost $300 on Amazon, and it was the last one they had in stock. This might have been the last one ever, but it's mine now. Long has man wished to rid himself of the physical burdens of mental combat, to shuffle out of his mortal coil. Now, finally, we can fight as true gentlemen, mind versus mind. Both the Buzz and Meister strap into the Mind Flex duel, subjecting their minds to the terrors of brainwave combat. As purportedly one of the most big brain players in the game, and facing off against the Game & Watch player, you'd be forgiven for thinking that the Buzz might have an inherent upper hand in the contest. But what happens next might truly shock you. Think it. Go. Think. Think hard. <laughs> Think harder. Meister is destroying you. The Buzz, what are you doing? The Buzz, what are you doing? <laughs> Bro. What? The Buzz, were you even thinking? Yeah. The Buzz gets rolled. 
<laughs> Were you even thinking? I was. What is this? What was that? That mind wasn't blank, bro. Uh, it's actually. I insane. know. Run it back. Run it back. Right, right. The buzz collects himself and rethinks his strategy. It's time for game two. Ready? Think. Think. Think the buzz. Think. Oh, yeah. Think. 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 I don't know if things are working. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I think my thing is not working. <laughs> You're supposed to be the real player, man. You're the smart guy. I think it's not working. It seems the buzz's mind is turning against him as he flies into an incomprehensible rage. Oh, I think we should swap. I think he just. Oh, you want to swap headsets? Oh. No. Oh. No. Just think harder, bro. I think mine's not working. He demands that we switch the headbands. Surely it is an issue with the equipment and not his feeble mind. The swap positions as well. <laughs> <laughs> if you end up bodying him, then that's just that. You that yeah, has dude. a greater degree of concentration. And then, with no excuses left. Think! Oh, no way. No way. Think the buzz. Concentrate. Use the power of your mind. Think harder, the buzz. The buzz, no! No! <laughs> Meister, the biggest brain of all! Alright, you switch sides and everything, bro. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, tough. Damn, That's I, even tough. I even tried doing hard mathematics in my head while doing this. <laughs> the buzz gets rolled a third and final time, sending Meister into the next round. I'm saddened to have to use the same game twice in a row, especially since Meister now has some experience, but alas, the granny was simply too greedy. So he puts the headset back on and faces his round two opponent, Fatality. I'm gonna try a different approach. I'm gonna just try recalling a certain memory as vividly as I can. Okay. And see if that'll get the job done. We'll see. Meister, so do you have a strategy? Try not to blink. Okay. Meister takes an early lead by winning two games effortlessly. You have one more shot, Fatality. <laughs> For game three, Fatality taps into the forbidden dark arts and enters Meister's mind. What is he thinking about? What is he thinking oh, about? Bro. Bro, what is he thinking about? I saw him in my mind, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he, you saw him in your mind. I did. He got in there. I oh, did. Oh, no. He's too powerful now. He's going to unlock some latent power. Oh, no. But alas, it was only a momentary distraction, as Meister is the victor once more and heads into finals. We flip back to the other side of the bracket, and I've got something brand new for this round two showdown between Aaron and Goblin. Something frightful. Something abominable. Something... <laughs> shocking! <laughs> This next game isn't really a game at all, but a simple reaction test. Each player is given a metal paddle. The goal is clear. Hit the button when the music stops. Winner gets nothing. Loser receives a... <laughs> shocking surprise. <laughs> Guys, I asked you both if you're okay with getting shocked. How do you feel about this? I did not sign an NDA. I did not sign an agreement. I'm not okay with it. We're getting shocked. Yeah. <laughs> No, now. we both agree, we both agree. Sure. Good friends and moist boys, Aaron and Goblin, are now locked into this chilling challenge with one another. They both take a paddle and their seat. You have to be the first person to hit the button. You understand? Two out of three, okay, right? Three out of five. No! Three out of five, it's a short game. Three, two, oh one, go. In a thrilling show of reflexes, game one goes to Aaron. Yes, yes! Oh, Goblin has been shocked! He's yes. been shocked! Oh my fucking god. When's the reaction test? Hey, 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 low key best of five. It yeah, is best of five. five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Dude, I'm so scared. Oh my god. It's on gentle. Press it, press it, Tony, come on. Cody! And then in round two, uh. Yes! What? I won. I hit it. You let go. Grab well, it, you let go. I hit it. The game just stopped working. At least that's what they said. I'm pretty sure Aaron just wasn't holding the paddle right. Look at this. What is he, a surgeon or something? Eventually, we try it with different people, and they say that it's not working either. Push it, push it, push it, out. Push it Okay, so it works. <laughs> we think one of the paddles may be busted, but that doesn't help us because we have to use players one and two. You can't use, like, one and four. So we have to use one of the busted paddles. Until Goblin has an amazing idea. Wait, it's the last person who only gets zapped? It's the last person to touch. Then so why don't we just hold both? Dude, no! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, shit! King shit! He saved the game. That's right, fellas. 
We're double fisting. We finally continue to play the games, and Eric continues to hold the paddles as if he were holding a sleeping angel. <laughs> I'm doing this. Hey, it's fine, because it's, 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 it's fine. It's it should work. It should work. All right, all right, here we go. After sharing some heated words, dude, I pressed them. Okay. Slow down the footage. Can, you, Slow down the footage. You can't. Eric can bear no more and cracks under the pressure. You know what? Fuck it, GG. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Goblin has won the day and will punch his ticket into finals versus Meister. I just want to say it, that this was fucking rigged. I should have won. And now, after a full day of gaming, it's time for our grand finals: Meister versus Goblin. So far, this tournament has tested players' technique, speed, brain power, and ability to perform as a malnourished personal care assistant. So, what could possibly be the final test for $100? The purest force in the world, raw luck. When it came down to it, I could think of no finer final game than Crocodile Dentist. It checks all the boxes, it's aesthetically pleasing, it's simple to understand, and it delivers the divine will of God himself. It's the perfect way to decide who to give $100 to. The object of this game is to pick the right tooth, pick the wrong one, lose a finger, and the tournament. Gentlemen, this is best three out of five. As we've said before, once you touch the tooth, you have to fully commit to it. You cannot feel around, no feelsies. Goblin, you will go first. Oh my god. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, no. 1-0. One 1-0 -oh. One -oh for Goblin. What do you think you did wrong that time? I went through his side. And I was pretty sure it wasn't here for some reason. Mm. And I, I just went like, maybe it's, maybe I'm wrong, you know? And yeah, yeah, you doubted yourself. That's yeah. really where it came in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to stay true to yourself. Game one is over. Meister, you first. <laughs> oh, oh, no! no. <laughs> hey, you did it that time. You stay yeah. on your side. Stay on my maybe side. you got to invade his side a little bit. Maybe He's I apparently got the good too. side. All right. <laughs> one, oh, you one. No <laughs> way! That's a 1 in 20 chance, or what is it? 1 in 10 chance. And you lost, bro. Alright, 2-1 Meister. All comes down to this. Meister, you first. No, no way! Oh my god! It's game 5! There's two 1 in 10 chances! The $100 oh, yeah. game! Of crocodile dead. I feel like we should flip a coin to see who goes first. Anybody have a coin? RPS, RPS. RPS, RPS. Best RPS. Go, go, go. Best of one. Best of one. Three, three. Okay. <gasps> Ooh, do you want to go first or second? First it is. Okay. Stretch up for a hundred dollars. Oh no. Oh. No! No! And just like that, he'd done it. Goblin was crowned his majesty, the supreme ultimate gamer. Meister, to his credit, proved himself a valiant sportsman. But it was clear Goblin was the better man that day and all other days forever and ever. I had truly found the greatest gamer on the planet. And though he would go on to place ninth out of 16 at that summit, and though he may have placed dead last in Squad Strike, and though he may have whiffed on every single bagel he threw in the bagel war, Goblin had won something far more valuable that day. One hundred dollars. Hey, thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. That's commendable. A lot of people didn't make it, but you did. Just wanted to say thanks for watching quick. Uh, this kind of video is definitely different on my channel, but I love doing it, and I'd like to do a lot more. So if you liked it, please like the video, because if you don't do it, somebody else will. Subscribe if you're feeling especially generous. It's actually free on YouTube now. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.